Hello, and exciting new news. This is 11 kilos of steel, and this is being turned into one of our new manifold adapters, which is awesome. So, all of your welded, cheeky chonky kind of manifold adapters that are big welded, TIG welded, and however you've done it in the past, and however we've done it in the past, forget it. This is the future, and I'm gonna show you. You were saying this is the non wastegate version. So this is the non wastegate version. <clears throat> so obviously this is the turbo turbo side of the flange, and then the engine manifold side of the flange. Does that have the on the other side of that flange? Does that have? Has that been mod? No, that hasn't been modified. The hyper mill's been modified, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm basically just trying to say is that we modified this section here so it actually follows the flange. You, it's not really massively noticeable here, but it is noticeable on the vehicle. So that's been modified in Hypermill. This is the initial model. Uh, we have this nice flowing curve so we can get from obviously the direction change. So the gas is out here in a square corner. And do you have the wastegate version to show? I do. And then I've just finished the wastegate, de wastegate design. Ah. So this is very similar. See, there's his, there's his engine manifold side, there's his turbo manifold side, and this is now where the wastegate is. So this will come out of the back, towards the back of the engine. Yeah, yeah. So um, basically what, again, we could have machined the wastegate flange into this, but to make it a little bit more straightforward and to make it a little bit more universal to your different wastegate uh options what we're going to do is make a flange that fits like a turbo smart 40 mil uh, wastegate seat uh, and then i'm going to tig weld that on we're going to tig weld it on before it goes out so if you had a different brand of wastegate um, we'd just send it out and you'd weld your piece on so um could have machined it in but it wouldn't have been quite as universal so yeah yeah i don't think there's anything more really we can say about the model no, that's no. pretty much it. That's it. <laughs> right, say bye. Bye. <laughs> so this is Hypermill, and Jonathan's going to tell us something interesting about this. <laughs> so this is our uh, manifold adapter model, um, and this is where we can generate the programs uh, to create all the fancy shapes. Um, and why do we need Hypermill for that? Uh, because Siemens has its limitations, so we can do quite Siemens complex things. Siemens is the control of this. Um, but when things get really complex with tapers and radi radiuses leading into tapers, um, we need to use a more powerful software. So we use Hypermill. Um, so when you have a model of whatever you want to create, you can start there allocating things to it. So we've got this roughing tool pad here. So that's now going to rough out that, this shape for us and, and put, it basically look like a load of stairs stepped. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You often see that with billet collectors, they they leave the steps in, and they, to like <clears throat> the untrained machinist, I always think the steps look really cool, but no, apparently that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've assigned some finishing passes because there's a lot more lines there, so that's taking finer finer cuts, but a lot higher feed rates. So that means we can also get a nice finish. What sort of distance do you think will be between those final cuts? That's 0.3 millimetres. Oh wow, okay. So that's really tight tolerance. It is, but we're running at quite high feed rates, so the total time to do this is only about eight minutes. Cool. Right, well, um, what we'll do is we'll show that when it's in action, and that'll be like magic. So here's some steps of the roughing pass. Quite rough, and then it's gonna smooth that out. Pretty cool.
compressor's always running when I'm wanting to make a video. Uh, but, Jonathan, explain what's going on. So every part, so we don't have to set stops up, it, the machine checks where it is in its position within the machine before it goes away and starts cutting it. So we don't have to put the bike part in perfectly, the machine compensates for it automatically. And um, so what's the, the proper name for this probe? So that's a, a, a Renishaw probe. And what would we have used if we didn't have that? I'd have to do it all by hand on every single one. Manual clock? Yeah, that's the one. Mm. So this is saving time and gaining accuracy, maybe? No, maybe? Mm, not really. <laughs> if you're good with the manual clock, it'd have been fine. <laughs> That's it, exactly. <laughs> so basically, this would probably yeah. be more accurate if I was using it. That's it what it takes saying. out the human error. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, and we're in the jungle of engines at the minute. And um, here we have it. So this is what the billet adapter looks like mounted to an engine. And obviously one of the main important things of the design is something that's come from a original fabricated design, which is compact. So the idea of getting it as tight and as close to the engine, this is the biggest turbo that we put on an adapter. This is the HX35 that you'd find in our HX35 kits. And you can see the gap down the side. You've probably got maybe nine, 10 mil, something like that. And this is the biggest that we put on the adapter. So you can, um, you can quite easily fit the S200 and all the other T3 turbos on there. But this is kind of, it's designed with this in mind. And it, it is on the same footprint, practically the same fo footprint as our original adapter, which we've tried and tested in so many vehicles, you know, G-Wagons, 1 fours, 2 tens, like, Everything we put a 606 in is pretty much we've tried an adapter and jigged it up. So our adapter was really, really like universal. Um, the only one, the only vehicle it won't fit is um, right-hand drive Land Rover because your right-hand drive Land Rover, you'll have your nice billet alternator bracket in front. So you would need a turbo further back or lower down or something different. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's what the billet manifold adapter looks like fitted, and it is so, so sweet. Keeps everything nice and tight, compact, strong. I love it. This is what it looks like on the bench. So the internal profile there you can see is done, which is really nice. It's all been nicely uh, machined out, which I'm really pleased with. You can see that's obviously where the the manifold bolts to it um, and then obviously this side is uh, is your turbo side your t3 side now this doesn't have it in but we intend to put the provision the provision for your egt or egp exhaust gas temperature or exhaust gas pressure uh, sensor tapping in there so what we're going to do is put in a, a drilling with that thread for, I can't remember what it is, what's the thread? 8 MPT. Yeah, 8 MPT, um, but not all the way through. So you could literally fit it and use it without the sensor in. And if you decided down the line, you saved up or whatever, you bought a, a sensor, you just will get, I don't know, I can't remember what it is, maybe three or four mil drill bit, pop it through, and then you'll be able to screw your sensor in. The threads and everything will be there. It just won't be quite through. So yeah, and to give you an example of what that looks like, just wait there, I'll grab it. This is the sort of thing you regularly see as a, as a manifold adapter. This isn't one that we've made actually. Um, I don't even have our, one of our manifold adapters in stock to show you, but it was smaller like that size and they have a reinforcing triangle in. Um, and one of the main points that I need to point out here is our original manifold adapters, the fabricated ones, were expensive. I can't remember what, I think £225, which is very expensive for an adapter. Um, and the reason for that high cost is because it doesn't matter who makes an adapter or uh, how good they are at welding or whatever, they do break. The, the, the weight of a turbo on a pipe with the heat, the cold, the heat, the cold, and eventually they break. So built into that cost was a factor of yeah, we'll be giving you another one, or we'll be giving you another one. They came with like a, a lifetime warranty on the adapters. Anyway, 
So I often see things like that and I'll look and I think, yeah, that's all right. If that wasn't getting hot and cold, that would probably hold the weight of the turbo forever. But you then combine hot and cold, weight of the turbo, then the vibration of the engine. And at some point that is going to crack without a doubt. There'll be lots of people screaming at the screen. I've had an adapter for 500 years and it's never broke, but yeah, whatever. That's not true. So, um, so here we go. This is the answer. One solid piece. Um, of high-grade steel, nicely profiled out, super strong, cheaper than the original fabricated one because we know we're not going to ever have to give you another one. Ready? Also worth mentioning, we have a wastegate version of this as well. So obviously the quick spool street kit and the other S200 kits and things all require an external wastegate, which we love the screamer sound of. So we have a version of this that actually has the wastegate port built in. Um, so that will be an option. It will be an extra cost option because obviously there's quite a bit more machine, a little bit more labor time involved in doing that. But there is a wastegate option available. So that's good news. Go on our website. I'll get them up on there. You can buy them. Just make your car as good as it can be with one of our special adapters. Goodbye.